Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto has awoken the Rinnegan after releasing a seal that was placed on him at birth, through training, part 1. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic. Kronos has a shadow, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. A soft calming ball of flames cast a humming, endearing glow over the small village. Shops were slowly coming out of their overnight slumber, and opening up for business. Stalls were being set up on the streets, the vendors behind them already attempting to attract customers. Wind blew softly over the village, blowing away the heat waves, and trying to calm the midsummer heat. The peaceful faces of the Hokage, looking over their village, completed the picture of perfect serenity. Whoops of glee, shouts of joy, and laughter tore through the perfect serenity. The villagers looked towards this new sound invasion, wolves. To find the village's menace running through the dirt roads at breakneck speed, with men women in billowing cloaks, with colored masks covering their face, chasing him. This was one of the five great ninja villages of the world, Kanahagakur. The village hidden in the leaves. The current happenings were a regularly occurring phenomenon. Kanoha would wake every morning to serenity, only to have it marred by the boisterous cackling of an orange-clad ninja wannab. Naruto was a blonde-haired boy with a round, boyish face marred by three whisker-like markings on each side of his face. He always wore an orange jumpsuit with white high necks, and orange trousers that reached up to the top of his ankles. He would wrap up the bottom of his trousers in ninja wraps to keep it out of anything he might trip on. Evidently, the boy's fashion sense was a living abomination on the face of the planet. Naruto was the boy that was running through the town center, cackling like a mad scientist, with members of the Anbu Black Ops on his tail. His bright clothing, bright hair, and maddening laughter, gave the ninja perfect beacons in the crowd to track. Ducking into an alleyway that he knew led to his apartment, he left some of his ready-made traps in his wake, as he darted towards his apartment. He was happy with the result of his pranks today, especially since he had managed to prank the village leader, the Hokage himself. As he ran towards his house, he thought of the perfect crime he just pulled. Flashback, Naruto was forced through the large oak doors of the Hokage's office. He was originally in a good mood to get to see the old man again, but his mood quickly deteriorated upon seeing the glare the Hokage was sending his way, and he was sure that the glare was meant for him, not the Anbu behind him. The Hokage sat behind a large mahogany desk glittered with paperwork, quills, pens, pencils, and ink bottles. The room itself was quite large, filled with showcases full of trophies, and pictures of old ninja that were honored in the village. One particular picture caught Naruto's attention, despite feeling the Hokage's glare drill a hole through the side of his head. He stared at the happy face of the fourth Hokage, the corners of his lips pulled up in a slight smile, his eyes closed in happiness, and his blonde hair billowing softly in the wind. No matter how many times he came into the room, that one picture always managed to catch his attention. Ears and Sir Toby cleared his throat to catch Naruto's attention, and it had the desired effect, as he turned from the face of the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikis, to the face of the third Hokage. Ears and Sir Toby. Naruto always thought it was weird, but due to the death of the fourth a few years ago, the third had to come out of retirement to take up the position again. Alright Nirubu, when what prank did you pull this time? What damages did you cause, and to what region? Sirotobi asked, the Anbu moved to answer his questions, but he held up a hand. I want Nirubu to answer, no one else will interfere. Actually, just leave me alone with the boy. The Anbu members that were in the room, standing behind Naruto, and hidden in the shadows to guard the Hokage, left the room in complete silence. Naruto walked up to the old man's desk. Well Jiji too I didn't actually do anything this time. The Anbu were trailing me for some reason, and they got to me before I started painting the Hokage faces. Naruto replied in all honesty. He didn't do anything this time, so he didn't need to lie to get out of trouble this time. Why would you even think of doing such a thing? The Hokage are respected people in our village, even if you respect them Nerubu. So why would you do such a thing to defile their memory? Sirotobi asked his surrogate grandson. He was surprised to say the least. Everyone in the village respected the Hokage, but in the heart of Naruto, the Hokage held a special place. Because I want to show everyone I will be better than them. I will show them that I can surpass all the Hokages, and be the best there is. Was Naruto's simple reply. It may not have been logical, but it was a reply nonetheless. Nerubu, I can't ignore this. Your everyday pranks I can overlook, but the defilement of a village monument is unacceptable. Naruto slowly paled, and started to clam up, as he heard his surrogate grandfather speak. He started to think of a diabolical plan to get him out of this situation. I will be asking Iruka to oversee your punishment. Every day, I want you to but he got no further. Transformation Jutsu. Naruto held his hands in a tiger seal. Immediately, a large amount of smoke poured out of where he stood, and out came a voluptuous blonde teenage girl with lush curvature. The girl was naked, but smoke covered her privates. As soon as he caught sight of this, the Hokage shot backwards with his head leading his body. The force of the fountain of blood that was now pouring out of his nose was too much for even the greatest of the village to handle. He watched the old man fall backwards for a second, but he wasted no time. 
Quickly, as lightning, Naruto changed back to his normal self, grabbed a juicy scroll that he had been eyeballing on the Hokage's desk for a while, and jumped out of the open window. Recovering quickly from his plight, he summoned the Anbu that were outside his room. Nerubu ran off with one of my jutsu scrolls. I want you to go catch him, and bring back the scroll, and Nerubu, unharmed. Hearing the warning in the Hokage's voice, the Anbu members disappeared from Sirotobi's office, but not before they caught the old man having an exhausted sigh. As soon as the Anbu left his room, Sirotobi went back to his paperwork. Flashback end, Naruto laughed his happy carefree laugh, as he stepped into his hallway, jutsu scroll in hand. Even he was exhausted from trying to run away from Anbu Black Ops members, as seasoned as he was in the art of evasion. Well, the Anbu were the village's elite, and he was a simple academy student running away from them. The dead last of the academy. Putting those sullen thoughts out of his mind, he decided to read the Jutsu scroll, and see if he could make heads or tails of a few complicated Jutsu. As he opened the content section, Naruto read the contents of the scroll out loud. Fire style. Eternal black flames. Fire style. Giant phoenix flower. Fire style. Meteor shower. Lightning style. Thunderclap. Illusion style. Soul binding. Sword style. Crescent moon slash. All of those sounded like awesome and complicated jutsu, but what caught his attention was the last two jutsu on the contents page. Uzumaki ceiling style. Chakra entrapment. Uzumaki bloodline. Azure dragon's wrath. Note, only for the usage of those with Uzumaki blood from the Uzumaki clan of Yuzashiagakur, the village hidden in the tides. Naruto ran his finger over the last two jutsu, thinking of the village and clan he never knew, the kinsmen he had never met, the jutsu he had never learned. The sense of family and friendship he never had. Running out of the apartment and making for the training grounds, Naruto decided to go train. Six months later, at the Ninja Academy, it was a pleasantly warm day today, warmer than normal for a winter day in Kanoha. The Kanoha Ninja Academy was abuzz with life, students were running around everywhere, trying to revise or practice their jutsu at the last second. Yes, this was the day for their graduation exams. Many of the students were wearing less clothes that day, favoring to wear lighter clothes due to the warmer day. Many were wary however, and brought heavier clothes along with them. Some left their heavier clothes with their parents, in order to pick them up later if they needed them. The parents tried to stay out of the way of the students for the most part, they were starting to form a ring around the academy. Parents weren't allowed to see the actual exams, but they were more than welcome to come and pick up their children, along with their report cards and their exam results. Naruto was one of the few students that felt like he didn't need to practice. The others that weren't practicing weren't doing so because they were confident they would pass. After all the Kanoha Academy exams weren't all that difficult, not compared to other villages. Naruto, however, was not practicing because he knew, no matter what he did, he would fail without question. Of course, there was also no way he was going to be able to pull off half the weak jutsu they were expected to perform. Uruka Yumino came out of the front entrance of the academy, wearing a normal chunin uniform. A green, long sleeve top, a green flak jacket along with green pants. He was wearing his Kanoha forehead protector proudly, and was one of the few people that understood where forehead protectors were meant to be worn. Kanoha Ninja had a habit of using their forehead protectors, as other weird things. He had a brown clipboard in his hand. Alright, all participants of the graduation exam, please follow me. Iruka called, and all the students, including Naruto, stopped whatever they were doing, and started to follow Iruka. Iruka-sensei, what are we doing for the exams? Sakura called out, she was one of the Sasuke fangirls. He cared, worried more about her looks than her skills, though she had a fair bit of book knowledge. You will know soon enough, I will explain once we are inside. Iruka answered cryptically, giving away nothing of the actual contents of the exams, and the manner in which the exams were to be conducted, as if he meant to entice them into being curious about their graduation exam. The class followed Iruka to a classroom. Iruka stopped in front of the door, opened it dramatically, and let everyone through. As soon as Naruto, the last student in the line, went through the door, Iruka went in, and locked the door behind him. This caused everyone to gasp. Sorry, but that had to be done. We don't want any outside interference while the exams are in progress. Iruka explained, trying to pacify those that were easily riled, and succeeding easily. Okay, sorry to keep you all waiting. Please take a seat according to where your names are posted on the seats. Everyone followed the instructions without a fuss. Naruto ended up sandwiched between Sakura, the crush of his short life, and Sasuke, his eternal arch nemesis. He didn't know whether to be happy about sitting next to Sakura or angry about sitting next to Sasuke, so he decided to shut up and be neither. First of all, I will explain the first part of the exam. To those that are wondering, there are five parts in total within the exam. Some people looked at Aruka weirdly at this. They grew up hearing about the four parts to the exam, but what was this fifth part Aruka was speaking of? Many of you look confused as to what the fifth part may be. Well, I will explain. The first part of the exam is a written test. At this, everyone, bar Sasuke, who was too cool, and Emo, and Sakura, too intelligent and loving of written tests, groaned their displeasure. 
Erika ignored the moans and groans and forged ahead. The second part of the test will be a Jinjutsu test. The third part will be Tajutsu, and the fourth part will be Ninjutsu. These are all common tests that you all know about and have learned about when your parents told you about the exams. The fifth part is a new test that the Hokage himself has felt necessary to introduce. It will be a free test. What do you mean, a free test? Surprisingly enough, it was the class cool boy Sasuke that spoke up. He never liked the unknown and had any phobic fear of it, meaning you are free to do whatever you want to impress the judges. Each judge will give you a mark out of 1000 based on how you execute whatever you were doing, including style points and the power of your technique. One of the judges will be the Hokage himself. Iruka said proudly, looking at the odd faces of the students. He handed out the papers for the written test, and they began. Everyone had finished the first four parts of their exams, and now they were waiting in line for the final part that would make or break their futures. Naruto knew he had done well in every part of the exam, other than maybe the written test, and the final jutsu of the ninjutsu test, the clone jutsu, but other than that, he was sure he was going to pass. This free test, this was his chance to shine. Each student was called out in alphabetical order, according to their last names. Many did their clan's signature jutsu, and executed them well. Many showed off their traps, and survival skills. However, nobody got a score in the 900s out of a single judge, and more people got a score in the 700s than not. Some even got a score in the 600s. The students were allowed to watch, as each of their peers was called out to the training ground in front of the two village elders, and the Hokage, and they performed their techniques. All the materials they needed were provided by the examiners. The students watched in silent anticipation, as the rookie of the year favorite, Sasuke Chiha was called out to the field. The Chiha, Sasuke. Iruka called, watching, as Sasuke made his way to the center. Sasuke walked out with a grim face of determination. He asked for a simple wooden dummy, and prepared to show off his best jutsu. Slowly going through a few seals, he finished on a tiger seal. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Sasuke called, jumping in the air. Taking a deep breath, he blew out a medium-sized ball of fire, aiming at the training tummy. As the fire engulfed the dummy, and slowly died out, there was nothing left of the dummy, but a stump that was burned too crisp. 892, 899, 912. Sasuke walked out of the clearing with an arrogant smirk on his face, having gotten the highest score of the day, as the Chunin cleared up the field behind him. Uzumaki, Naruto. Iruka called. The students almost broke out in mirthful laughter, as Naruto walked with a passive face. He saw the display Sasuke had put on show, he saw how high the bar was, but he knew he could do better. He had jutsu that were far more powerful than a simple ball of fire. Well, Naruto, what do you need for your technique? Iruka asked impatiently, while silently wondering whether Naruto planned to do anything decent. Would it be possible for me to showcase too? I would show more of my arsenal, but I only have enough chakra to do only two of these at a time. Naruto replied. The Hokage looked at him, grim faced. Nerubu, if you can do more than two of them, then I suggest you only do one of them. There is no need for you to go to the hospital with chakra exhaustion at your age, and for something so simple as the graduation exam. The Hokage warned. Naruto nodded his understanding. I will take a katana, and a 7 foot tall cylindrical piece of metal with a diameter of a meter. Many eyed him suspiciously. What is he trying to pull? There is no way someone like him can cut through a piece of metal that thick. Heck, even I can't. Sasuke thought in astonishment. Despite his thoughts, he sensed there was something going on. No way, Naruto Baka cut through a piece of metal. There's no way anyone, but my Sasuke-kun can do that. Sakura shouted out loud, ignoring the looks of annoyance from the males, and the looks of agreement from the females. Naruto ignored everyone, and everything around him, as he took the katana in his hand, and put it on his hip. Ever so slowly, he began to draw the sword in a majestic arc, while he chanted what sounded like a poem. Azure flames freeze, and azure flames blaze. Azure phoenix cry, and an azure phoenix smile. Azure dragon sing, and azure dragon wail. Slowly, as soon, as the tip of the blade seemed to have left the sheath, he started to sheathe the sword again. See? All he did was chant a poem. Sakura shouted, while others also shouted in agreement. Nobody caught the hundreds of slashes that went into the metal post. Even the Hokage only saw blurs that looked remotely akin to slashing. With an audible clunk, the sword was replaced in the sheath. The chunk of metal exploded in azure flames outlined in black. The flames engulfed all of the metal that was there, rising high into the afternoon sky, as it burned through the atmosphere. No fragment of metal was left, no charred soil, no ash, nothing. The metal post just burnt away into the air, leaving no evidence of what. A perfect kill. The Uzumaki bloodline limit. Azure Dragon's Wrath. Naruto hummed lightly, as he placed the sword in Iruka's arms. He walked away, without looking at the scores he got, already knowing the result. 1000, 1000, 1000. Sasuke Oton in outrage. Naruto glared at his favorite teacher. It wasn't usually the case, he always got on with Iruka, though sometimes Iruka was more than a bit annoying for Naruto, as he was the one that always caught Naruto after he played a prank. 
This time, however, Naruto had a legitimate reason to be angry at him. I'm telling you Ruka-sensei, someone rigged the test. There's no way I didn't pass. I did half decent on the written test, I did okay on the Jinjutsu, I did better than most on Tajutsu, and I would say my Ninjutsu was a borderline pass. As far as the free test goes I had, by far, the highest score in the entire academy. So tell me Ruka-sensei, how the hell did I not pass the graduation exam? Naruto hollered at Aruka, for once, in more anger than he usually blessed Aruka with. Naruto, I can see that there is no reason for you to not have passed your exam. In fact, in my opinion, you should have passed with flying colors, and praise. But it's not my opinion that counts here, I can't do anything about the marks you were given by the markers, it isn't my place to argue. Aruka pleaded, though he knew he wasn't going to get anywhere. Naruto could be really stubborn when he wanted to be. So you're telling me to take this lying down. I have taken a lot of nonsense from a lot of people in my life, but this has reached a record low. What kind of bullshit is this? Naruto screamed, but before Ruka could say anything, he whirled and stormed off. Oh boy, I get the feeling I am going to really regret this later on. Lord save us all, that boy can be a handful. Ruka muttered to himself, before returning to marking the papers he was set to mark for the younger students in the academy. Outside, Naruto found a familiar face waiting for him, leaning against a column that supported the roof. Seeing Naruto approach, he too came towards him. Dobe, I need to talk to you. Come with me for a bit. Sasuke commanded, not bothering with a greeting, or asking whether the other boy had time on his hand or not. Not now theme, I have things I need to take care of. If you need to talk about something, talk about it here, and talk about it now. Naruto replied, also not caring for niceties. Fine. I'll tell you here. The jutsu you used in the fifth test, teaches me how to do it. Sasuke said, taking on the same commanding tone again. Forget it, there's no way you could learn something like that. Naruto smirked. Why not? If you, with no name Dobe, the dead last of the academy can learn like that, then why can't I, the rookie of the year, the heir to the Chiha name, learn it? Besides, I have more need for a powerful jutsu like that than you ever will. Sasuke shouted, not bothering to check if anyone else was in hearing range. Simple. Is your precious Achiha brain too small for you to understand the concept of a bloodline limit? Then let me make it clear for you, only an Uzumaki can learn jutsu. Naruto hollered back, then proceeded to walk away from the shellshock Sasuke. Besides, I need to talk to the Hokage about something, I don't have time to waste on people as arrogant as you. Naruto walked away calmly, leaving a dumbfounded Sasuke in his wake. Where is the useless, hyperactive dun that he was until a few days ago? Sasuke thought. Naruto was currently talking to Mizuki, one of the chunin who was a teacher at the academy. He wasn't sure why Mizuki wanted to talk to Naruto, but he said he wanted to discuss something important. Had it been someone other than one of his teachers, Naruto would have flipped him off and walked away, but alas, it was one of his teachers, and he was forced to listen to him. Naruto, I'm sorry you didn't pass the graduation exam. I was one of the people that was in favor of passing you, along with Aruka, but the other teachers were for some reason completely and utterly against letting you pass. I'm afraid I and Aruka couldn't do anything about the situation. Mizuki started. Naruto was starting to have his doubts about whether Mizuki was going to talk about anything remotely important, or if he was going to just drone on and on about how unfair life was. He needed to get to the Hokage so he could complain, and Mizuki was currently getting in his way, frankly. But seeing, as you're the only person that didn't pass this year, I know of a special graduation exam that you can take, hearing that, Naruto perked up. If Mizuki didn't have it before, he certainly had the young boy's attention now. It only becomes available if only one member of a class doesn't pass the exam. All you have to do is prove your worth by taking the scroll of ceiling from the Hokage Tower, run away with it, and learn Jutsu. If you can do that, you pass the special graduation exam. Something told him this was a trap, that this was stealing, that it would land him in serious trouble. Going against his better judgment, Naruto took off to find the scroll of ceiling. Thump thump. Thump thump. Thump thump. He could hear his heartbeat in his ears, faster than it had ever been in his life. Though he didn't stick around to find out what happened, he hadn't left early enough to not hear the Hokage sending out the anvil with a serious order. Bring the boy and the scroll back to me, both unharmed. I will deal with the thief personally. Those were the direct orders of the Hokage to the anvu. Naruto's blood had run cold as he heard the tone of the old man's voice. He knew he had done something wrong, so terribly wrong, but he couldn't go back now. His instincts told him from the very beginning this was a trap, and once again, his instincts were correct. Naruto didn't hang around long enough for the Anbu to find him before he took off, completely masking his presence and his trail. He wouldn't be caught, not by the Anbu, not by Ruka, not by anyone, no matter what happened. He would stay hidden and complete this special graduation test. He sped through the forest, jumping from tree branch to tree branch, as the sound of pursuing ninjas slowly became more and more distant. He was losing them, he was using his only talent. Evasion. Coming to a small clearing, ringed with tall trees, within the forest, Naruto stopped to take a rest. His breath came in shallow, ragged pants. 
He ran, as fast, as his feet would carry him through the forest to get there, but he could move no more. Deciding to learn the jutsu now, rather than leaving it until later to do it, Naruto slowly unraveled the massive scroll. The scroll opened with a slight glow, but no resistance. As Naruto sifted through jutsu after jutsu, as they got harder to execute, and more taxing to maintain, poring over complicated diagrams, and puzzling explanations, his eyes ran over something that shook him to the soul. There, on the scroll of ceiling, was a handwritten excerpt next to a ceiling array that made his eyes water, and his blood boil like molten fire. Dear Naruto, if you are reading this small piece of writing I had time to leave, and you are seeing the ceiling array that has been placed on this scroll, then I assume you have succeeded me, as the fifth Hokage. First of all, I wanted to apologize for leaving you with something as heinous as the Kayubi, knowing that the villagers would resent you for it. I am sorry for leaving you with such a difficult life, for cursing you to hell on earth, but it had to be done. I had to do something to protect the village, and the only thing I could do was seal the Kayubi away, as a child, so the chakra network wouldn't be, as developed, as an adult's, so that the Kayubi could be properly sealed. As you know, I had to give my life to make the seal, so I didn't have the liberty to experiment on as many babies as I wanted to. I had to get it right the first time, so the only baby I trusted to contain the Kayubi was my own. I'm sorry I had to do something so criminal, but it had to be done. Your chakra network was already developed for a baby who was just born, so I had to place a seal on you to make sure your chakra was accepting enough for the Kayubi to be contained. The seal, however, had the adverse effect of sealing your potential away, as well as a bloodline that you had seemed to inherit. When you read this Naruto, I want you to place your hand on the sealing array, and pump a little of your chakra through your arm. No matter how old you are, I'm sure your chakra has already accepted the presence of the Kayubi, and you are ready to receive your true powers. Upon activation, the seal will also give you Rai Jinjaka, your grandfather's precious Nadachi. It's Uzumaki clan heirloom, wield it with honor. And always remember, me, and your mother loved you, for however long we got to know you. Love, Minato Namikis, 4th Hokage, your father. Gingerly placing his hand on the sealing array, he slowly pushed the little chakra into his hand. The seal did the rest. Rapidly, it drained Naruto of chakra completely, and he suddenly became aware of a vicious presence in his body. Before he could think any further of this presence, the chakra was slammed back into his system, but the chakra was strengthened tenfold, causing his chakra network to expand. He could feel the fire in his veins, the raw power that was coursing around him, he could feel his mind expanding, his senses improving, and sharpening. Not long afterwards, he collapsed from the stress and pain of having so much chakra pumped through his system. Naruto woke to the sound of shuffling feet. As soon as he remembered where he was, he sat bolt upright, not wanting to get sneaked up on by someone. His eyes flew open, as realization hit him, looking around, he saw Aruka coming towards him. Stay back, don't come closer, Naruto moaned in a hoarse tone. His throat felt like someone had used sandpaper to rub it clean. Not wanting to get caught, Naruto tried to stand up. Easy there, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm here to pick you up, the Hokage wants to see you. Aruka tried to soothe him, rather than alienate him even further, but didn't stop his forward advance. He's lying to you, Naruto, calling out a sickly sweet voice. Naruto, now standing upright, turned to see who the voice belonged to. Mizuki was standing on a branch on one of the trees that formed a ring around the clearing. He only wants to get the scroll of sealing from you, and use it for his own gain. Somehow, Naruto felt sharper, smarter, faster, and stronger, though his body ached and complained, almost refusing to listen to him. Things looked clear to his eyes, he could see chakra coming off of the bodies of the two ninja close to him, he could hear both of their calm breathing. His brain worked faster than ever. No, you tricked me. You only wanted to get the scroll. You're the one that wants to use it for his own good, Naruto muttered in a deathly calm tone. His eyes shifted from Mizuki to Aruka, taking the scroll, and giving it to the Hokage. Roll it up, and no matter what you do, do not read a single word that is written in that excerpt. What are you going to do, Naruto? Aruka asked, already rolling up the scroll, looking at Naruto with concern. I am going to take care of this traitor, and come back to the Hokage Tower. I have some explaining to do to the old man. Naruto replied, already turning towards Mizuki, and getting ready for a battle. Spotting a flash of yellow from his peripheral vision, he moved towards it rather than Mizuki. You may be the demon, Brad Mizuki started, only for Iruka to interrupt. No, stop Mizuki. It's forbidden. Iruka screamed, cutting off what Mizuki was going to say. Why not, he would learn about it someday, that he is the reincarnation of a demon for the second time in less than a minute, Mizuki was interrupted. Save your breath, I already know I was the one who the fourth Hokage sealed the Kayubi in. There is nothing surprising about it, considering the treatment I received from the village. Naruto sighed slowly. He had picked up an Adachi from the floor. It had appeared there once the seal was removed, as his father had promised. A black lacquered Nadachi pattern with azure flames. The hilt was a simple white, the pommel a stark silver. The sword was simple, but even an amateur could see the craftsmanship behind this sword. It exudes power and menace. Erika gasped upon hearing Naruto say this, while Mizuki only sighed. 
Uruka opened his mouth, then closed it, only to open it again. Forget it Uruka sensei, just go, I don't mind one bit. I'm going to quickly finish off this moron, and come to catch up with you. Naruto was getting tired of waiting. Well then demon, how do you plan to beat me, a chunin, in that crumpled humanoid form of yours? Mizuki screamed, convinced that Naruto was the Kairubi, and not Naruto himself, and pulled out a few Mashuriken. Simple. One move, that's all I need. Naruto said, implying just how much stronger he was than a normal chunin. Azure flames freeze, and azure flames blaze. Azure phoenix cry, and an azure phoenix smile. Azure dragon sing, and azure dragon wail. Suddenly, Naruto wasn't in front of him anymore. One moment, he was there holding on to the Nadachi, while the next, he was gone. Vanished into thin air. Something was burning, he could smell it. It was something alive, fleshy. It smelled like burning meat. With horror, he realized what was happening. He screamed, as pain overtook his mind, and his body started to burn away. Standing on a branch a few trees behind where Mizuki was previously standing, Naruto muttered. Uzumaki bloodline limit. Azure dragon's wrath. Naruto was happy with this new katana, it seemed to be attuned to the azure flames. He wasn't, however, happy with the way his body had reacted when he had used chakra. His chakra network burned, as if it was still recovering from the strain of the seal that had just been recently removed. I really like this jutsu. Burning away the target until even the atoms don't remain. The heat that it gives off is ridiculous, but so is the amount of chakra that it consumes. Whoever invented this jutsu is a genius, combining space-time ninjutsu with fire and wind manipulation, and then outputting it through the sword. Took me 5 months of constant chakra exhaustion to even get this jutsu to a point where it can be used. I still need to master it though. Naruto's thoughts ran rampant, as he sped through the forest to catch up to Uruka. Naruto woke to a smell of disinfectant, sight of white sheets and curtain, and the sound of a whispered conversation. He wasn't aware of where he was or what had happened after he killed Mizuki. Where am I? Naruto thought. I'm telling you Harrison, there is no need to put the genie back into the academy, just because of one measly dead last, Danzo whispered to Saratobi, trying not to wake the already awake Naruto. What's going on? Where am I? Naruto questioned, cutting into the conversation that the older males were having. He wasn't aware of it just yet, but they were talking about him. Nirubu, good to see you awake. You are in the hospital, I admitted you here because of chakra exhaustion, and some minor damage to your chakra network. How are you feeling? Saratobi asked the boy kindly, not giving him any clues as to what the prior conversion was concerning. I feel fine, just a bit sore, hungry, and most of all thirsty. However, all things considered, I feel perfectly fine. How long has it been since my admission? To say Saratobi and Danzo were surprised was an understatement. Overnight, the boy's tone of voice had changed, along with his speech pattern. No longer did he speak in a friendly, bright voice. Gone was the sloppy, almost tramp-like speech pattern that Naruto had used before. What's going on? The boy sounds more like a Hayuga than a random ninja that lived on the streets for half their life. Danzo thought in astonishment, while Saratobi thought in a similar line, but in a much kinder fashion. Not long, you just slept overnight, Saratobi answered, ignoring the fish-like gaping Danzo was doing right now. I see, when will it be possible for me to take my leave? Also, concerning what you were speaking of before I intervened, what were you implying when you said the genin were being sent back to the academy? Naruto asked suspiciously, his second question being directed at Danzo. This time, Danzo answered coldly before Saratobi had a chance to answer the question. Saratobi has decided the genin that recently passed should be sent back to the academy due to corruption and favoritism among the teachers. This time, he has decided all students will be monitored by a jounin he trusts. You will be able to leave any time you want, you have been treated. Saratobi added, remembering the first question that was asked. I see. I will take my leave after a short slumber. As for the other matter, I agree. I was the only one that failed the graduation exam, even though I was certain I was one of the top scoring students during the exam. I scored, by far, the highest on the fifth test, which was set to award the highest amount of marks towards the end result. This shows that there is at least a slight bit of corruption within the academy teachers, as well as the fact that one of the teachers of the graduating class was a traitor who I, regretfully, had to kill. Naruto informed, much to the old men's shock, and to Danzo's chagrin. The Hokage only nodded at the information provided by Naruto, while the Warhika only thought. You foolish brat, of course I know there was corruption within the academy, I was the one that ordered them to fail you after all. Naruto frowned at the smirk that had unconsciously come onto Danzo's face, but chose to ignore it. Now, if you will excuse me gentlemen, I have some sleep to catch up on. With that, Naruto was back under the covers, and under the cover of sleep. Naruto felt himself floating in what he assumed was air. He could feel nothing, literally nothing, hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, and see nothing. He was floating in a timeless black abyss. He couldn't feel any clothes on his body, so he assumed he was naked. Where am I? Naruto thought, still half asleep. Thinking sets in motion a chain of events. 
First was the fact that the black abyss morphed into something more substantial, a sower, but there was no pungent smell. The color of the atmosphere slowly turned from black to a dull olive green. Where am I, and what am I doing here? What's happening? Naruto thought, slightly panicking. Suddenly, he could feel an overwhelming evil presence near him. As he looked towards where he thought the presence came from, he saw what looked to be a jail cell. The inside of the cell glowed a dull reddish orange. You don't realize where you are brat. A deep gravelly voice seemed to call from the depths of the cell, the voice shook him to the core of his very being. You don't recognize who I am. Something told Naruto he should be scared of what this thing was. He still didn't understand where he was, or how he had got there, but this thing made him forget all of those worries, and focus on it. He didn't know if he should actually be scared of the thing, seeing as it was behind bars, but he decided to be wary. Who are you? Naruto called, not wanting to speak too much, lest he speak out of line, and anger whatever it was that was behind bars. I am the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox, brat. Your tenant, as you might know. The fox came in full view of Naruto now, his demonic coat glowing with power, his slitted eyes blazing. His entire gigantic form exuded menace, rage, greed, and all things negative in the world. Seeing the fox this close, Naruto wanted to run, and hide like a little child. So, what do you want with me? Why did you bring me here? Well, I assume it was you that brought me here. Naruto fought the urge to run, he knew running would do him no good here. If the fox wanted to, he could come after Naruto, and destroy him within a second. I wanted to speak with you, brat. It seems the time has come for us to make a pact, so as to not get in each other's way. Kayubi said, though in his mind, he was thinking down a different line. Of course I want to make a pact with you, the eyes you unlock with your potential because of the seal puts my life in jeopardy. I might not want to admit it, but I can't do anything against those eyes of his. Sure, Naruto forgot the previous fear he had for the Kayubi. He surprised the proud fox by smiling, and walking right up to the giant rods that were keeping the Kayubi captive, so, what would making the pact with you entail? I assume you want to offer something, but you want something in return. Look, Brad, I have been stuck inside you for the past 10 years. I might not want to admit it, but even I can see that I am not getting out of you anytime soon. At this, Fox grimaced, making his intimidating features look truly frightening, so I want to offer you my full cooperation. I will allow you to use my chakra at will, but in return, I want your word that you won't enslave me with your eyes. Naruto didn't seem to be listening, though he was, and was climbing up the gate that kept the cell closed. Upon reaching the center, he once again surprised the Kayubi, but this time, by ripping off the seal that kept him captive. Brad, do you realize what you have done? You have set me, the nine-tailed fox, the Kayubi, the greatest demon on this planet, free. You have set me free. Kayubi's voice rumbled like thunder, the pressure from his presence multiplied tenfold. A nurse had come into Naruto's hospital room to change the sheet, assuming that Naruto had already vacated the room. So imagine her surprise when she saw a boxer-clad Naruto laying in the bed, looking peaceful. At first, before seeing Naruto, she was humming happily to herself. She enjoyed her job, helping out at the hospital, helping the injured, the sick, the elderly. Even she, however, had to admit that doing the same chores day in and day out had gotten more and more tedious, boring even. They felt like chores. Her breath hitched in her throat when she saw Naruto laying there. She walked slowly towards him and tucked the sheets under one of her armpits to allow the other hand to be free. She intended to wake Naruto so she could change the sheets. She dropped the sheets, and let out a blood-curdling scream, as an orange rage-filled aura consumed the room. The doctor came running, wanting to see what had happened for a nurse to have screamed like that. Seeing the state of the room, he did the most rational thing he could think of. Informed the Anbu, and the Hokage, the demon is running rampant. He called. I know what I did, Kayubi Naruto was cut off by the Kayubi. Call me Karama, brat. That's my real name, right? I know what I did Karama, but the fact that I released the seal father had put on you doesn't mean that I am allowing you to do as you please. Naruto explained, not missing a beat even, as he referred to the fourth Hokage, as his father. Um, so you found out about the fourth being your father. I would lie to you, brat, even I held that man in great respect. At this, Kurama's eyes glazed over, as if reminiscing about the past, but what do you mean, you won't allow me to run rampant? Let me clarify, brat, you set me free. Keep your hair on, sheesh. What I am doing is not allowing you to run about, and do, as you please, but offering you an extension to our pact. As he said this, Karama's eyes lit up, as if intrigued. I will allow you to live outside of this horrid place, maybe even allow you to come out from time to time, but you must promise me your complete allegiance. I expect you to listen to every word I say, and never, and I mean never, attack the villager attempt to take over my conscience. Karama contemplated his words for a bit, thinking it over, and tossing it around in his mind. He seemed interested in the deal. On one hand, I can't do absolutely anything I want, but in exchange I would be as close to freedom as I could hope for. In essence, this is offering me good living conditions, and a will of my own. Well, what do you think? Want to take me up on my offer? Naruto was never known for his patience, and even after removing the seal, his lack of patience showed no sign of improving. 
I will take you up on your offer, Brad. It's the best living conditions I have ever had within a Jinchuriki. Somehow, Kurama's tone of voice sounded lighter, as if he wasn't trying to kill everything in the general vicinity with just his voice anymore. Thanks to Kurama, Naruto smiled, and his smile got even whiter when something clicked into place in his mind. I will never be alone, and family less while you're still here. What are you trying to say, Brad? Kurama had an inkling as to what his container was saying, but he did not want to jump to any conclusions. After all, the idea of a human being calling a great demon such as him a part of their family. Utterly ludicrous. Well, think about it. Throughout my entire life, you were the only thing that was constantly there. It's like you're trying to fill up the void left behind by my parents. After all this, I think it would be an insult to not at least consider you a friend, if not family. Naruto said, his smile sat perfectly in place. For the first time in his long and arduous life, and not for the last, Kurama smiled. Not one of his menacing I am about to demolish your life smiles, but one of his I am actually really happy smiles. In what could only be interpreted as an affectionate gesture from the fox, he placed his right forepaw on Naruto's head, simulating a fatherly pat. Your parents would be proud of you, Brad. Even after all this, he still called him a brat. Nirubu, Nirubu, wake up. Hiruzen was shaking Naruto by his shoulders, attempting to wake the small blonde boy. Naruto was sweating profusely, his small frame shaking violently without the Hokage having anything to do with it. Whatever was happening to Naruto, it was scaring the third, and he wanted the boy awake, as soon as possible. Slowly, Naruto's eyes fluttered open slightly. He felt something on his shoulders, and he was wondering what it could be. Ignoring the old man shaking him, he sat upright, and rubbed his temples. Nirubu, you okay? You were shaking like a leaf, and leaking chakra. You really scared me for a bit. Sirotobi half shouted, half spoke. He was shaken up, and most of all, worried about Naruto, and his seal's condition. It took Naruto a few precious seconds for him to- Don't worry, Gigi. Everything is fine, but I think you would want to know about what happened while I was asleep, Naruto said, at which Sirotobi arched a perfectly groomed eyebrow. It's quite important to my status, as a ninja, and whether you still want to let me pass through the academy. Why wouldn't I want to let you through the academy? Nerubu, don't tell me you did something stupid Sirotobi trailed off, waiting for Naruto to answer with patience that could only be accumulated through the endless years Sirotobi spent, as a ninja. Naruto shook his head. I can't tell you here, not while well anyone could walk in on us, as if to prove his point, a nurse walked into the room with new sheets. Not the same nurse, as before, that one was still recovering from what she saw earlier. Does this have something to do with Naruto leaking the Kyubi's chakra earlier? Fine, meet me in my office in an hour or so, but first go to your apartment, and get cleaned up, he vanished in a swirl of leaves. I believe all my belongings have been taken care of. At this, the nurse only nodded a silent head, good, then I believe the time for me to take my leave is long overdue. He too vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto walked into his apartment to find the messy flat completely clean, and void of any mess. Strange, my house is always messy, regardless of how careful I am, Naruto thought in confusion. He had more than a reason to be confused, his apartment never stayed clean for more than an hour, even after he cleaned. Naruto was immediately on high alert. Years of beatings, torture, evasion, and stalking the streets at night for supplies, had driven home one thing into his young mind. Caution. When even when entering the apartment, he had made no noise. His presence gave nothing away, not a sound, not a smell. He had learned long ago how to mask that using chakra. Several run-ins with the Inizuka clan had taught him the importance of masking the latter. Taking no risks, Naruto prepared two chakra entrapment seals, one in each hand, and started walking towards the living room. This time too, he walked through the door without a single squeak, without a single noise. At this point in time, even though he was young of age, and shallow of heart, he was a master of stealth. No matter what the villagers said or did to the young boy, no one could deny it. Right now, Naruto was using every single ounce of those skills and stealth to keep himself hidden, lest he run into something unpleasant. He had no idea. No idea just how unpleasant his discovery could have been, if only his discoveries had nothing but good intentions towards him. There, sitting on his old ragged couch were two men, well that's what Naruto assumed they were. One was taller than the other by quite a fair margin, and they both slumped backward, as if asleep. They were wearing long black cloaks adorned with red clouds, and simple hats made of straw covered their heads. Naruto had heard about these legendary criminals, he had seen them in the bingo books that he stole from the trash cans. Akatsuki. Naruto's mind froze, literally froze. No one threw him for a while, he just silently stood there with the seals still active on his hands. He couldn't comprehend what someone along the lines of members of Akatsuki would be doing here. Almost as soon as his mind froze, however, his mind started going into overdrive. All his senses suddenly sharpened, his eyes started consuming chakra, but in turn, his vision got a lot better. He seemed to be able to see the chakra in the two relaxed figures on his couch, and he was scared. Their chakra signatures were massive. What the hell are they doing here? 
Well, I can't do much other than seal away their chakra and hope for the best. There is little hope for me to fight and win against such opponents. Naruto thought, keeping his calm despite being scared out of his mind. Slowly and silently creeping towards the two limp forms on his couch, he did what he could to keep himself safe at that moment in time. Pumping all the chakra he could into the seals, so they would hold fast for a long time and resist a high chakra output, he tapped both the men on their heads and pulled out his nadachi from its sheath. Wake up, holding the nadachi over both of their torsos, he shook them awake one by one. Who are you, and what business do you have at my residence? Itachi turned around, paying no heed to the blade which pointed somewhere between his upper chest and the lower part of his throat. Coal black met sapphire blue, as Itachi tried to put Naruto in a Jinjutsu with his Manjaku Sharingan. A shocked expression flitted momentarily across his face, before his face returned to the old stoic mask. Kissum was watching the exchange with a bored look, still trying to figure out just why he couldn't channel any chakra through his body. Uzumaki-san, please lower your blade and sit with us. We have much to discuss. Itachi's voice was a lot lower than he thought it would be, seeing as the man had less than masculine features, in his opinion. He was expecting something higher and more feminine. Walking around the couch and sheathing his nadachi, he decided to sit on the ragged armchair across from the criminals, all the while keeping a careful eye on both of them. Itachi-san, can I kill him? Kissum asked, much to Naruto's fear and Itachi's ire. No, Kissum, I will not allow you to kill the boy. This relieved Naruto somewhat until Itachi turned to him. Tell me Uzumaki-san, why are we not capable of using chakra at this moment? I place a seal on both of your heads. There is no point in struggling, though there are very limited places where I can place the seal. I happen to have had access to the one that is usually the most effective, Naruto replied. He was going to ask more of the pair, but he was under the impression that talking out of line would get him nowhere good. It never did. Please, don't be afraid. We are only here to talk to you. You will find that our proposition would be highly beneficial to you, especially seeing the dejutsu you seem to be in possession of. At this, Naruto's face turned confused, judging by your expression, I take it you are unaware of your bloodline. Oh, so that's what the scroll meant. Naruto breathed, not daring to speak too loud. As time wore on, he was becoming more and more scared. He wasn't used to being in the presence of such dangerous people, people that may or may not be hostile. Please relax, we bear no ill intentions towards you. The corners of Itachi's lips pulled up a bit, which Naruto took to be his attempt at a comforting smile. Seeing as you have such a powerful bloodline, I would like the opportunity to train you. Now, Naruto was no fool. Had he really been the idiot that he was pretending to be in front of the village, he would have jumped at the possibility of being trained by someone remotely, as strong as Itachi. However, idiotic he was not. Why are you doing this? When Itachi opened his mouth to answer, Naruto held up his hand and continued, Don't tell me it is due to the bloodline. I am no fool Itachi Ichiha, and only a fool would take help from a shinobi, as powerful as you, knowing that you might have hostile intentions. I assure you, I have no hostile intentions towards you. When Naruto didn't respond, and only looked to kiss him, Itachi tried to defend his partner. Neither to kiss him, as I'm sure, his earlier comment was only him being normal. He rather enjoys bloodshed. Naruto cringed for a mere moment. It still doesn't explain why you want to train me. If you really did want to train me just because I possess this bloodline, then pray tell, what are you doing in my house? What do you mean? Itachi could see him getting suspicious. It's true I hold no ill intentions, but even still, this boy is sharp for a child that is still in the academy. Please, like I said, I'm no fool. Judging by your reaction after seeing my eyes, I can only think that you only found out about my bloodline after meeting me in person, which still leaves the question, why are you in the premises of my residence? Where did the boy learn to talk like that, and why was his mind so sharp? Besides, I can tell by your attire that you are a member of Akatsuki. If I know one thing about Akatsuki, it's that they are not friendly. Especially the two of you, Itachi Ichiha and Kisum Hashigaki. Itachi's eyes widened. He was expecting the boy to know his name, seeing as they were from the same village, but for him to know Kisum's full name. Where was this boy getting his information from? I was expecting you to know my name, since we are originally from the same village, but how do you know about Kisum? Naruto only rolled his eyes, criminal or not, it was really comfortable talking to them. Talking to Itachi was like talking to the older b Itachi Uchiha, currently aged 15, graduated from the academy at the age of 7, became a chunin at the age of 10, and by the time you were 13, you were an Anga captain. The third known person to have awakened the Manjaku Shuringen, but due as use, you are now nigh blind. You killed your entire clan a few years back, with the exception of your younger brother Sasuke, and ran away from the village, and became a missing nin. All through this, Itachi's eyes became whiter and whiter, while well, you told your brother to hate you after torturing him through the use of Tsukiyomi, and left him for dead. You really loved your brother from the bottom of your heart, and still do, I assume. Though you told him that you killed your clan in order to test the extent of your abilities, you really did it to stop the coup that your father and the senior clan members were planning. Itachi-san, is this kissum started, only to be interrupted by a thoroughly irritated Itachi. 
Be quiet for a second kiss him. Slowly, Itachi turned to Naruto. How do you know all of this, and who gave you this information? Naruto decided to ignore the outburst from the otherwise calm man, and continue with his barrage of information. Though the Hokage was unaware, you were under the orders of Danzo Shimar. You were given a choice between dying with your clan, while the village took damage in order to completely annihilate the Ichiha clan, or you simply killed the Ichiha yourself, and saved your little brother, who was innocent, but becoming a missing nin in the process. You, being the traumatized pacifist you were, obviously chose the second option for the betterment of the village. He looked into Itachi's eyes, daring him to contradict. While this was happening, you met up with Madara Ichiha, who would have attacked the village, but you pacified him through offering to eliminate the Ichiha clan for his revenge. Did I get any of that wrong? Itachi only gaped for a few minutes. As calm and collected as he usually was, he had no idea how to react to this insolent child that seemed to be able to pick apart his greatest secrets with the greatest of ease. Finally, finding his voice, he muttered. How do you know all of this? Simple. Being hated and tortured by the village, as I grew up, I was forced to become far more mature than my age allowed. Since I was always hunted by the village, sometimes even by high-ranking tracking ninja, I had to quickly learn to become stealthy, Naruto replied. That still doesn't explain how you know all of this about me, Itachi was showing minor signs of shock. He was honestly baffled by this kid. I also stalked the streets at the time. Seeing, as I was homeless and lived on the streets, I would usually go from place to place in an attempt to find whatever food I could, Itachi only nodded, still not understanding where information gathering came into this. One particular day, I had found a rather decent meal for my standards at the time, and I was quite full. I happened to have found the meal in one of the trash cans in the Ichiha compound, and coincidentally overheard your father's plans about the coup. So naturally, curious boy, as I was at the time, I decided to tail the most powerful Ichiha I could think of. Itachi looked at him like he was crazy. You failed me for three days without me noticing anything. Impossible. You may have learned some stealth, but staying hidden from me for that long is laughable. Itachi sounded calm for someone so full of rage and turmoil. If there is one thing I learned about stealth, it's that the best way to hide is in plain sight. I transformed myself into a fly and hid in your hair for three whole days. Kissum looked skeptical, while Itachi's face finally morphed into one of understanding. It was hard going without food and water for three days, but that's only for a normal person. It was a piece of cake for me. So that fly was you. I always thought that it was too persistent to be a normal fly, but I never acted upon the notion. I was quite tense due to the circumstances at the time, Itachi got up and gave him a pat on the head before sitting back down. You are quite well informed about me considering you are still in the academy. So you have no information on me. Kissum whined, he almost sounded like a petulant child. Nothing on you Kissum Hashigaki, other than the fact that you are an SS rank missing nin from the village hidden in the mist, were formerly one of the seven swordsmen of the mist, and are the wielder of Sadanaga, a chakra consuming blade that looks more like a barbarian's club. You are also famed to have chakra reserves comparable to that of the Nibi, the two-tailed beast. Naruto drowned. Wow, for someone that says you don't have any information on me, you sure know a lot, Kissum muttered, disappointed that he wasn't, as unknown to the blonde library, as he once thought, tell me kid, where did you get the dirt on me? The bingo book I found in a trash can once, I still have it. It was one of the ones that included all the known criminals with all the known information on them, going from D rank all the way up to SS. I can only think it was for someone from Anbu Black Ops or an elite Jamin. Explaining things, Itachi rejoined the conversation. So, are you ready to accept my reasoning? Right now? No. You still haven't told me why you were in my house. Itachi let out a tired sigh. Well, you were right. We were formerly members of Akatsuki, though the reason for us being here is that we have since left the organization. The man that was running everything calls himself a god, and expects all of us to kneel to him. We are powerful ninjas, all of us, and that doesn't sit well with us. So we decided to leave. Explains why you are here the most. Why do you want to train me? Naruto asked, his ever suspicious glare in place. At this point in time, Itachi had resigned himself. This boy is too smart, way too smart to be the dope of the academy. There is something missing in the picture, but one thing is clear, this kid is way smarter and stronger than he lets on. The Akatsuki are planning on gathering the Bijuru and essentially take over the world. The two of us leaving puts a kink in their plans, but it's only bad enough to delay them. For us to truly counter them and stop their plans, we are planning on training you up to our level, so they can't get their godly paws on you, Kisum said simply. Naruto nodded. Okay, for now, I will leave the seals on you. I am going to go take a shower, get changed, and head out, both of his guests looked confused. You two are coming with me. I have an appointment with the Hokage in about half an hour now. Wait, are you trying to hand us in or something? Kissum almost shouted. Kissum san please keep your voice down. I plan on doing no such things, the Hokage is an understanding man, and I don't plan on harboring SS rank criminals in my house without his knowledge or approval. He paused for a second, though, if what you say is correct, there is no reason as to why you should be taken in. 
from what I know about the Hokage, he should have no problems with you living with me, and, as far as I am aware, he should be willing to take Kisum-san into the Shinobi system, and reinstate Itachi-san in his former position. We shall see, but keep in mind we don't plan on getting discovered, Itachi tried to play the peacemaker, as always. Sure. With that, Naruto was off to take his shower. Remind me why we are like this. Kisum said, trying his best to keep his voice even, and his sword from mauling the brat in front of him. He was currently disguised as a 14-year-old boy with long red hair and bright silver eyes. He was wearing the traditional Kelmi Now orange that was usually worn by the Uzumaki boy. His clothing, however, consisted of more plain tracksuit bottoms and a shirt rather than a jumpsuit. At least it was a relief. Itachi was faring better off than his partner, but not by much. He was disguised as a 13-year-old girl, short brown hair and soft hazel eyes. What annoyed him most was the bright bubblegum pink jacket he was wearing, and the yellow skirt that was brighter still. One of these days, he was going to turn the blonde into a stain in the sidewalk. Because you didn't want to get noticed, so I decided to disguise you in the attire that I thought most appropriate, he slowly headed out the front door, you guys coming. Needless to say, both of the SS rank missing nin were fuming at the 10 year old academy student. Dumping from rooftop to rooftop with some limited use of chakra on Naruto's part, and just pure muscle strength from Kisun and Itachi. Though their appearances were severely altered, their muscle mass and strength were retained, much to their joy and Naruto's chagrin. He wanted to see them both fall down and destroy a couple buildings. They were having a good time on their way towards the Hokage Tower. Despite having no access to their chakra, the SS rank missing nin were fast and were seemingly held behind by Naruto, who was sprinting over the buildings to the best of his current abilities. He didn't go about using Kyubi chakra everywhere. Kisum san, are you still annoyed about these transformations? Naruto asked the redeed on his right, to which the red head only scowled up at him without giving an actual verbal response, I'll take that as a yes. So, what do we do once we get to the Hokage? I assume you have a plan. Itachi, the brown haired girl on his left, asked. He was anxious, to say the least, to meet the Hokage again. He hadn't exactly left on friendly terms with the old man. I have a meeting with the old man. Once I get through that, I plan on springing that fact about you too. Naruto seemed to think for a bit, but I don't know if you will be allowed to stay for the meeting though, it might include some sensitive information. That's fine. We respect the village's need for secrecy. We will sit it out if we need to. Itachi replied. Out of the pair of them, Itachi did most of the talking, while Kisum did most of the slaughtering and threatening. They traveled in silence for a while. Naruto didn't have the liberty to choose where he lived, so his apartment was quite far away from the Hokage Tower. Even via rooftops, it took a while for them to make the journey. Naruto was the first to break the silence. Out of curiosity, why were you guys sleeping on my couch? Seeing, as you have been fugitives for so long, wouldn't one expect you to be on high alert at all times? We traveled for a few days without rest. We were planning on just waiting up for you, but since you took so long, we ended up falling asleep. This time, it was Kisun that decided to answer. Surprisingly, his answer didn't involve murder. The fact that the couch was comfortable helps too. Naruto's only reaction to this was a prompt sweat drop that he soon wiped off. They had arrived at the cylindrical tower where the Hokage resided and worked from. It served as the main operational base where all the main offices in the village resided, including the Hokage's office and the mission center. Alright, let's go in through the window. I don't like doing it through the entire damn tower, the glares and the shouting matches are too troublesome, and I don't feel like dealing with them. Naruto muttered to his companions. Walking up the side of the building with the use of chakra, Naruto didn't notice that the other two didn't follow him. Walking up to the Hokage's window, he perched on the windowsill and looked down, seeing the two's predicament. I guess you guys can wait out here. I'll talk to you guys, that might be better to calm the old man's nerves. The two simply nodded up at him. Going in through the window, he found the Hokage deep in conversation with what looked to be a jounin with a navy blue face mask that covered most of his face up to the bridge of his nose. He was slightly crooked, covering his left eye. Takashi, it's about time you return to full duty. I needed some reinforcements to my rank soon. Someone, as skilled as you, would be a great help. Just then Naruto decided it was the perfect time to drop in and interrupt the party. You wanted to see me, Gigi? Naruto asked, ignoring the Cyclope ninja for now. Yes, Nerubu, give me a moment, Sirotobi turned towards Kakashi, go to the mission center, I have a mission ready for you. Kakashi silently nodded, and Shunshin straight out of the chair. Naruto walked around the Hokage, and sat on the chair that his senior previously occupied. The mood instantly turned somber, as the gravity of the situation caught up with Naruto. Well, first of all, I got a report saying that you were leaking Kayubi's chakra in the hospital. Tell me Nerubu, what was that about? The Hokage asked. Naruto sighed, and proceeded to relay the story of what happened with Kurama. Needless to say, Hiruzen Sirotobi was shocked beyond his ancient years. To think the Kayubi, the great demon lord, would take a liking to the boy, and actually strike a bargain with him. It was a ridiculous idea. 
As Naruto relayed more and more of the story, the old man's reactions started to become more and more pronounced. Starting with white eyes, he quickly moved on to sweating, then shaking, and beyond. Though, to his credit, he managed to not wet or soil himself. So let me get this straight, Nerubu. You basically released the seal that cost us the life of our greatest hero, the fourth Hokage, your father Rupsirotobi quickly went silent. He was scared of what Naruto's reaction may be to finding out that it was his father that condemned him to a life in hell. It's fine, Gigi. I already know about Minato Namaka's being my father, though I am still curious about who my mother was. Father made some references to my mother, though he never mentioned her name outright. Right, you will have to tell me the story of how you found out about that at a later date. But anyhow, back to the topic. You basically wasted his sacrifice, and set the Kyubi free, and then struck a bargain with him that he may or may not respect. He sounded more incredulous than shocked. He learned from years of experience that Naruto wasn't the most predictable person in the world. Quite accurate. You shocked me to no end. That isn't the end of it, I believe. Would you like me to introduce my guests in person or would you rather have me talk on their behalf? The Hokage's eyes narrowed in suspicion. There was no way this child was going to surprise him any more than he had already done on this night. I think I would rather meet them. Very well, Naruto's voice was barely above a whisper, hardly audible to Sirotobi's old ears. Naruto stood up and walked around to the window. Not sparing the old man another glance, he jumped straight out of it. Itachi and Kisum looked up to see Naruto walking towards them. Wordlessly, he grabbed both of them around the back of the collar, and walked back up to the hook. Well Nerubu, I see nothing that could shock me so far. Naruto decided to take his spot on the chair once again before responding, setting his guests on the chairs that were beside him. Though, that's due to the fact that they are under the effect of my transformation jutsu. Looking towards his companions, he raised his hand in half a seal. Release. Both of their transformations went up in a poof of smoke. Once the smoke had cleared, both had returned to their original appearance, though Kisum was missing his dear great sword, Samahata. Noticing Itachi, and remembering the identity of Kissum from a bingo book, Sirotobi only pointed, and sputtered. Shock was written all over his face, his eyes wide, and his mouth opening, and closing in a good imitation of a fish. What are you doing here? Sirotobi roared, though he controlled his voice so that nobody outside his office would become suspicious. The last thing he needed was to have some civilian clerk coming into his office to see either of these two men. Naruto, and Kissum looked towards Itachi, as if expecting him to answer. The usually calm man looked slightly flustered, though he still explained about their sudden appearance in his village. Basically, up until now, we were part of a secret organization called Akatsuki. The person that leads the group calls himself a god, and expects all of us to bow down to him. The two of us decided to leave the group, seeing as it didn't sit well with us. Itachi took a breath before he started explaining about their plans. Akatsuki plans to capture the Bijuru, and eventually take over the world. The two of us leaving stalled their plans, but it's not a permanent solution. To resolve the issue permanently, we came here to train Naruto, the Kyubi's Jinchuriki, in an attempt to permanently thwart their plans. What was your reason for coming here to train Naruto? Why not one of the other Jinchuriki? Sirotobi asked, though the man had calmed down somewhat, and was no longer roaring, he was still suspicious. Why wouldn't he be? He was sitting in front of men that could destroy nations if they so wished. There are several reasons. Naruto is the carrier of the strongest of the Biju. I am originally from this village. This village is the most accepting, and has the most understanding leader, Itachi was done explaining to the old man, and now moved on to his requests. We request that you allow Kissum to take up a position, as a Jounin, and allow me to take over my former position, as an Anbu captain. Also, please keep my return a secret from the rest of the village. As for our residents, we can manage to stay with Naruto. Are these terms agreeable for our residents in the village? Sir Toby sighed. On one hand, if this wasn't a trap, he would gain two very strong ninja for his rank, and two personal tutors for Naruto. On the other hand, this could end up destroying the village if it was a trap. The Hokage, old and trusting, as he was, decided to believe it was the former. Alright. Come back here in a couple of days to pick up the paperwork for you to be initiated into our ranks. Itachi, Kisum, and Naruto all look pleased, and Itachi, welcome back to the village. Beams of sunlight poured in through the open curtains, lighting the room in a warm orange glow. The sun was barely up over the horizon, but Naruto was already awake. It was going to be his first day back at the academy after the break, and it was going to be his first day training with Kissum. The village had taken the news of Kissum joining the ninja rank surprisingly well. They completely ignored the fact that he was formerly an SS ranked criminal, and a part of an organization that was planning on world domination. What they focused on was the fact that they would see a strong Jounin join their ranks. Itachi and Kisum had decided to let the latter handle the basics of Naruto's training, like Tajutsu and Kenjutsu, since he was a better teacher for Naruto. Plus, he was better at those two subjects than Itachi anyway. Itachi and Kisum had been living with him for a couple of weeks now, and they hadn't started their formal training just yet. Well, not the techniques and Jutsu portion, anyway. 
Itachi did, however, teach him a jutsu to help him train faster. Flashback, Naruto had just walked into his apartment after a sweaty day at the training grounds. The students got a two-week break after the graduation exams were over, and Naruto was using this to train. Suddenly, Naruto found his way blocked by a hard body that was slightly taller than him, and felt akin to a steel wall. Itachi stood there, looking at Naruto's sweaty, red face. He looked as if he was contemplating something, looking at him with his Shuringen active. Shuringen, not Manjekyo, so it wasn't as scary for the boy, as it could have been. Naruto, come outside with me to the training grounds for a while. I'll teach you a new jutsu. Itachi said, but he didn't get the hyperactive response he was expecting. Yes, Itachi nai, Naruto mumbled, before walking back out the door he just came in from. They were currently standing in training ground 3, a small ground used for drills and tojutsu practice. Training dummies and wooden posts littered the training ground, some battered and in tatters, while others looked brand new. So Itachi nai, what jutsu did you want to show me? Naruto asked, already tired from his day-long training session earlier. He has spent the last 10 or so hours kicking away at a wooden post to improve his tojutsu, and he wasn't exactly energetic after all of that. Shadow clone jutsu, Itachi said in his monotonous, deep voice, though there was an underlying tone of humor, I heard from the academy teachers that you are terrible at the clone jutsu, so I decided to teach you something better. Naruto only sighed. Itachi was right, of course. Naruto was terrible at the clone jutsu, no matter how little chakra he put in it, it would always overload and end up looking like a pale ghost that just finished emptying the entirety of his stomach and bowels, including the intestines. Itachi, knowing Naruto learned better through experience and actually doing things, decided to give Naruto a demonstration. Putting his middle and index finger together, he crossed them over and muttered. Shadow clone jutsu, and immediately, two clones appeared either on either side of him. Naruto copied exactly what he saw Itachi do, and manipulated his chakra the same way he felt Itachi do it. Pushing chakra out of his body, and manifesting it into a body similar to his own outside his own body. That's what he saw Itachi doing. Shadow clone jutsu, something wasn't right. Naruto had chakra reserves that rivaled cages, so why was he feeling so drained from something so simple? Itachi had made two perfect clones, and he didn't even look phased. There was no way Naruto's chakra control was so bad, was there? Itachi chuckled lightly. It was the first time Naruto heard him do such a thing, and frankly he was scared. What's wrong? Naruto asked. Leave it up to a Jinchuriki to create 2000 clones on the first try. Naruto looked around behind him to see a legion of clones stretching into the woods behind him. He probably passed out from chakra exhaustion. Flashback end, Naruto swung his legs over the edge of the bed, and instantly felt heavy. He was still trying to get used to the weights that Kissum had made him wear starting a week and a half ago. He must have been insane, I mean, we started a 10 year old kid's training by strapping 20 pound weights to each limb, and 30 pounds on his torso. And he told him to not take it off even when he slept. Naruto groaned. At first, he couldn't move an inch off the floor after the weights were strapped onto him, but now that he was slowly getting used to them, his movements started to become easier. Though it took some effort, he was now capable of walking, running, doing push-ups, and sit-ups. That, however, was all that he was currently limited to. His daily training schedule consisted of spending 5 hours doing non-stop running, an hour of rest, 3 hours of constant push-ups, and 2 hours of relentless sit-ups. Kissum had said something about increasing base strength and stamina before beginning speed and actual technique training. That on its own would have been an effective training schedule, but the added weights and the thousand clones that were training with him meant that he was actually training for 10,000 and 10 hours a day. Normally, the physical fatigue and exhaustion would kill a normal ninja, seeing as dispelling a shadow clone not only returned the memories and results of training, but also the fatigue that had been built up through training. Naruto, however, was alive and perfectly healthy, courtesy of the fox that was sealed within him. Even though he did roughly 420 days worth of training in one day, a good night's sleep did wonders to revive him. Walking over to the wardrobe on the other side of his room, he pulled out his Kelmi Now orange jumpsuit. Naruto sighed, this was going to be a long day at the academy. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.